Hello everyone. Welcome to Boston at Home. I like Capcom. I'm Kyle Bossman. This is my kitchen, and it is nighttime for this episode because it is too hot to record the show during the day, and I'm starting to believe it is too hot to record it at midnight. It is steamy in here. Good, fine. It'll be a good episode, right? Uh, I want to talk about Capcom, of course, because of this moment. I had the strangest thought recently. I played through the Street Fighter V story mode, got to the end of the credits, and I saw this. The Capcom logo. The same logo they've been using since 1983. That old logo is still in use. And I just felt the strange feeling that I am grateful for Capcom. Capcom has been easy to hate on for five years now, maybe ten, you know, it's like, oh, Capcom, screw you. You know, it's just, it's been easy on that to just not like that company at all. And the truth is, they're, they're great. Yes, they're clumsy. Yes, they make big, dumb mistakes. But they're st I'm still happy they're here. I'm still happy they're part of this thing. And so what I want to do today is talk about three video games that make me happy we still have Capcom. Game number one, Street Fighter V. So yeah, as, as I just said, I just played through the story mode of Street Fighter V. And why it makes me grateful for Capcom is I'm convinced this story mode could not exist anywhere else. Yeah, it's very similar to what Mortal Kombat has been doing the last two games, uh, and Injustice as well. Uh, but it's so uniquely Capcom, this story mode. It's not great. No, if you want great writing, if you're expecting, oh, this is really blowing my mind. No, no, it's bad. It's just as bad as you think it's going to be, but that makes it so good. Yeah, I mean, look at it. It, it even looks bad. It look, the characters look like plastic stout action figures. Let's be honest, they don't look good. But what strikes me so much about this dopey story mode is how much the game cares about these characters. There's a reason for the story mode to exist. It makes the game Street Fighter V. It makes the game unique. It makes it unlike any other Street Fighter before it. I just want to show you this scene. Look at this scene right here. Here we have Chun-Li and Cammy just hanging out on a wall talking to each other. You don't see this in a Street Fighter game. You don't see this in fighting games. You don't see this in most video games, this kind of scene. It's not the only reason I picked this scene, because I always wanted to look at this thing. Look at that. Look how bad this is. That's bad. That's straight up, no, that's not what a child looks like. This to me clearly is some six foot tall mocap actor pretending to move how he assumed a child moves. And then they just shrunk that man's skeleton down to three feet. I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. That's bad, but Video games need this badness. We, they need this sincere badness. That's the thing. It's not just dopey for the sake of it. This this believes in itself. The, the Street Fighter V story mode believes in its characters and it believes in itself so hard that some of the moments actually come off as meaningful. But, and there's still stuff like this, though. If you escape, they won't see me anymore! Game number two, Resident Evil 7. This game just announced at E3. It already feels like old news, right? It's not. Don't let it feel like old news yet. This is still a crazy thing. We haven't seen this game yet. The demo is not related to the game itself, which comes out January 24th of next year, 2017. That game is coming out soon. We still don't know what it's like. We played this demo, and I mean, we should talk... We should talk about the demo. We should talk about the clear thing. This game is Silent Hills. It's PT. Yes, this is this was a game that was announced at a press conference with a demo that you could play today. A shocking announcement. Uh, this is a, a, a first-person sequel to a horror franchise that started in the PlayStation 1 era. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. And by all means, this is a worse game than PT and Silent Hills. You know, it's less scary. It doesn't look as good. It's less interesting. It is, uh, it's just, it was less of a shocking reveal. But despite that, hey, this one's happening. We're getting this one. Resident Evil 7 will not be canceled. And for that reason, I'm so happy. Because yeah, I get where Konami's coming from, right? They're a business. AAA games doesn't make enough money for us. We gotta go to the slot machines. We gotta go to mobile phones. It just doesn't make sense. And that's what they're, yeah, fine. Capcom, we'll do it. We'll make that game. Yeah, first person Resident Evil 7, let's do it. Thank you! Yes, Resident Evil 7 will probably have problems. It will probably have the nastiest DLC. Just plan on it. Just count on that coming eventually. However, the game is coming. We're gonna play that game. And so even if it is a worse version of Silent Hills, it's something that we can play. Thank you, Capcom. 
Game number three, mighty number nine. Here he goes. Okay, boss man, I let her rip. I tear it apart. I don't want to do that too bad, uh, partially because I could not play through the whole game because it really is just dismal. It's just a dismal game. It's not like, <laughs> this sucks. It's just like, D I don't want this. I don't want to go through this. I can show you though. I can show you why Mighty Number no. 9 uh, <laughs> makes me happy for Capcom. So let's just look at the beginning of this game. Violence is confined to the Battle Coliseum, where robot combatants face off in spectacular duels. Today, the Coliseum walls once again echo with the shouts and cheers of excited fans. When, suddenly... Suddenly what? What, just, what suddenly happened? We're just supposed to go now? That's it? That's so dumb. That's the wrong way to start a game. And I know there's probably lots of other people uh, on YouTube in front of cameras who can tell you everything that's wrong with Mighty Number no. 9. Even just, you know, you have to stop to listen to dialogue at the beginning of that game. You don't have to go that far. It's already wrong. It's already not right. And to show you a right, I'll show you a game that had a smaller budget. A game that was developed by a smaller team. No excuses here. Look at one of my favorite game intros of all time. press start right now? Don't you want to press start right now and get going? That's how you start a video game. So to me, Mighty Number no. 9 just shows off the absence of Capcom. That game was funded off of FU money toward Capcom, right? You know, when it comes, I wanted to make a Mega Man game. They didn't let me. Please have some money. And we're just like, yeah, yes, make it. FU Capcom, here's my money. You make us a Mega Man game. And he couldn't. Inafune could not make a Mega Man game. <laughs> He couldn't do it. There is some sort of magic element that Capcom brings to a game that is just missing from Mighty Number no. 9. I know Capcom isn't making a, Me a Mega Man. That maybe they might be. Maybe they're secretly making Mega Man. You know what I'm hoping? You know I hope it's not based off the animated show. Oh, what if it's based off this guy? Oh no, it would ruin this episode. If they're making a game that's based off this guy, I have to go back and take this entire episode back. Uh, in the meantime, Mighty Number no. 9 makes me somehow grateful for Capcom. <laughs> That's really all I had prepared this week. I just feel that over the course of the last generation, uh, we saw a lot of huge Japanese publishers, historic, just video game, video game, video game. We saw them shrink, we saw them scale back, and sometimes just disappeared. Sometimes poof, uh, went out of business. And that is so sad. That's so sad if you love video games. And so to see a company like Capcom still doing it, it feels good. It feels like we should stop and appreciate them. We should stop and appreciate Sega. Who else is going to throw this idiot party? This is- you did this so wrong. You made so many dumb mistakes. Alright now, give yep, one second. Everybody, stay calm. We're almost there. I promise. We're almost there. But no one else would have thrown that party. No one else would have thought of that than Sega. No one else would make these games but Capcom. And so I just... Yeah, they might not be your cup of tea. Yeah, they're clumsy, stupid company, Capcom. But, you know, they're just... They're still here. They're still in this world of video games. And while they're here, they make this world of video games a stronger, more diverse place for ideas. I'm in. I'm so in on Capcom. I'm so happy it's still around. I'm just feeling good vibes from that logo. Just keep it. Never change that logo. It's good. It's like Coca-Cola, man. Just don't don't change that. Uh, that is the episode for this week. Uh, that is uh, episode six in the bank. Quite a gap between five and six. 
who cares? Not me. I'm pretending not to care. I'm pretending not to feel bad uh, because I don't want to promise a new episode soon. <laughs> I guess that's our deal. I guess that's the negotiation we have. I'm at Kyle Bossman on Twitter. And if you have the internet, why not check out patreon.com slash easy allies? Why not just go there and see what's there? Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's, uh, he's being a little cute this week. It's um, myself and a lot of former Game Trailers employees have teamed up together to continue making videos and podcasts and live streams all about video games. And they're fun, and we are supported through Patreon. That's that's how we continue, that's how we subsist. So it's worth checking out, at least to see what's going on over there. And that is the episode for this week. I will be back again, and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I wanted to talk to you about the first time I ever doubted Keiji Inufune. I want to talk about that. I remember it. I remember the time, I remember the moment where I started, where you just, you have a certain vision of someone, and then you can change that in an instant, it can flip in a second, and what happened was Mega Man Legends 3 was announced in 2010, whoa, 3DS, okay, uh, Keiji Inafune, cool, thank you, that, I love Legends, I love that series, Mega Man Legends, one of my favorite series in video games. There was something fishy with it. It was called the Dev Room. And basically, the Dev Room was pitched as an exciting thing. You, the fans, can help with this video game's development. You can vote on stuff. You can submit designs. Maybe your robot design will make it into the game. Isn't that exciting? No. Even me, super fan, not interested. Just make the game. The first thing that fans could vote on in the Dev Room is what the female protagonist would look like. We already settled on the man. Don't worry about him. <laughs> help us pick the girl. And there was a lot of really... Great submissions from Capcom artists. And uh, everybody just look at these. Good. Yes. Cool. This one won. This one, I would have played this game. Good. Good. Great. Blat. Blat, blat, blat. Guess who made this one? Guess who made that? Keiji Unifune. <laughs> you know, sometimes you see Miyamoto's drawings and you're like, wow, he's actually, he's still got it. He's pretty good. Keiji Unifune, what is this? Is this kind of some kind of sick joke? Why would you why would you do this? Why would you put that up? Why would you finish that drawing, color it, and say, okay, all done. Put this on the internet, vote for me. No! It's just bad. It's just a bad drawing. And I don't mean bad drawing as in like bad artist, like, oh, Kyle makes fun of people. I I draw stick figures. Are you mad at me? No. Let me show you JJ Abrams. Look, he just said this. Let make this robot for me. That's a bad drawing, right? But it's genius. It's good design. This is not. That's an absence of design. In 2013, <laughs> the first thing people could vote on for Mighty Number no. 9, just three years later, it happens again. Look, here, help us pick the girl. Okay, here's this one. This one wins. This one should have won. Okay, blat. Blat, 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 blat. Why? Why do you think this is okay? Why would you... That's so bad. That's atrocious. So I just feel like a drawing can be insight, a window into a person's mind. And this is what your mind comes up with? You want that in the game? Do you know what that looks like? I don't know why, I, it's, it's just a drawing. It means nothing, right? It just, oh, it affects me. It's like having a spider creep in through your ear and into your brain. That's what that drawing looks like. This one too, hey there. My name is Tiffy. Hi, Tiffy. I'm Bullgraf. Let's go and have a nasty little picnic. Can I bring my math homework? Okay, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry, teacher. I cheated on my math homework. We're bad girls. <laughs>